Hey, everyone. Um, let's, here's a familiar question. Is this glass half full or half empty? Half full, half empty. Both answers are half true. It's half full and half empty. So today I'm going to talk about five slightly more complex half-truths about happiness. These are truths that are widespread, and they're true, but they're only half true. And I want to shine a spotlight on, the, on both halves of these truths. And I got started thinking about the half-truths of happiness when I met a woman at a children's birthday party. She asked me what I did, and I said, well, I write about happiness, and I experiment by doing resolutions to see if they affect my happiness. Things like sing in the morning, or hug more, touch more, which Catherine would very, very approve of, um, or imitate a spiritual master. And she got a very skeptical look on her face and said, uh, you make happiness sound like a lot of work. Meditation has changed my life. Do you meditate? And I have to say I'm a little bit defensive about my failure to try meditation. I mean, has the fact that I have never tried it even once mean that I am utterly soulless? Um, so I said, well, my approach to happiness is really to think more about my day-to-day -day actions in my everyday routine. She shook her head and said, happiness is very huge and profound. It's not a matter of crossing a lot of little things off your to-do list. And I got kind of riled up to answer her because, in truth, I can become uh, fairly belligerent on the subject of happiness. I, I once almost got into a fist fight about the nature of Zen. Um, and fortunately, we were interrupted. But I realized that what she said was half true. Happiness is huge and profound, but it is also a mass of little things. So today I'm going to talk about five half-truths about happiness. And I want to talk about both halves of these truths. Now, do two half-truths make a whole truth? It's like that joke about uh, two wrongs don't make a right, but two rights make an airplane. Um, but here we go. The, the first half-truth about happiness was most famously stated by Jean-Paul Sartre, pardon my French, um, who said, hell is other people. Hell is other people. Heaven is other people, too. Ancient philosophers and contemporary scientists agree that a key, and maybe the key, to happiness is strong relationships with other people. To be happy, we have to have long-term, intimate relationships we need to feel connected. We need to belong. We need to be able to get support. And just as important for happiness, be able, we need to be able to give support. So what are the implications of this? Well, one thing is to just show up. I mean, Woody Allen said that 80% of success is just showing up. And 80% of relationships is showing up, making the effort. And one thing that's very effective is to join a group. And whether it's a group about anti-gravity juggling, or figuring out a million ways to make the world happier, or dog training, or yoga, or learning a language, or supporting an important cause. Joining a group strengthens relationships. I love reading children's literature and young adult literature. And I am in three, three groups of adults who read children's literature. And it has done so much to improve my relationships with other people. And another thing, and this is not a shock, is do something kind for someone else. Do good, feel good, really works. I had a friend who went through a terrible period in her life. She got fired, she got rejected from the graduate program that she applied to, and her long-term boyfriend broke up with her. And she's okay now, <laughs> but I said, how did you get through it, what did you do? And she said, I was practically addicted to doing good deeds. It was the only thing that made me feel better. Now, of course, we should do good for others because it is the right thing to do. But it's also true that one of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make other people happy, even with small gestures like picking up other people's trash or signing up to be an organ donor. Now, the second half-truth about happiness is to think that happiness is all in your head. 
Well, happiness is in your head, but your body also matters tremendously to happiness. And your physical experience is always going to color your emotional experience. And so one of the things that's important to think about is energy. A sense of energy is very tied to a sense of happiness. So what do you think about? Now, this is so basic, I should not even have to say it, but you have to start at the basics. You have to get enough sleep. Raise your hand, how many people here get at least seven hours of sleep regularly? You have to get enough sleep. P many adults are chronically sleep deprived and they kid themselves into saying that, oh, I've, I've trained myself to get by on five hours of sleep, but these people are quite impaired. Lack of sleep affects mood, memory, focus, immune function. In one study of why people were in bad moods at work, one of the top reasons was a bad night's sleep. The other was tight work deadlines. In the same vein, you need to be active. You do not need to train for the marathon, but you just need to get out and walk around 10 or 15 minutes. Um, exercise is like this magical elixir because it calms you down and also energizes you. But let's say you're in an emergency and you need a quick fix right now of a way to connect to your body and a way to give yourself a jolt of good cheer. What can you do? Just jump up and down a few times. It's lighthearted, it's energetic, it's childlike, it's kind of goofy, especially if anybody's watching, and you will get that fix of good cheer and energy right away. The third half-truth about happiness is to think something like, a messy kitchen is too insignificant to matter to my happiness. Now, I fully acknowledge that in the context of a happy life, something like a crowded coat closet or an overflowing email inbox is trivial. And yet, I find myself, and many people tell me they feel the same way, that, there's, that outer order contributes to inner calm more than it should. There's something about getting control over the stuff of life that makes you feel more in control of your life generally. And if this is an illusion, it's a helpful illusion. So one of the things that I do to try to get that sense of outer order is I follow something called the one minute rule. If there's something that I can do in less than a minute, I do it. If I can hang up my coat, if I can op rip open a letter, skim the contents and throw it in the trash, I do it without delay. And that keeps stuff from, uh, there's just the scum from accumulating on the surface of life. And another thing, I am not saying this is the most significant thing you could do to boost your happiness. But I talked to hundreds of people about their resolutions and what resolutions that have they've tried and what's worked for them. And when I asked, the number one resolution that people specifically mention as something that they have tried and which they say does indeed make them happier is the resolution to make your bed. How many people here regularly make their bed? There's something about making your bed. It's, it's, you cross it off your to-do list first thing in the morning. It's manageable, it's realistic. A room looks so much better with the bed that's made. And plus you can find your shoes. And the fourth half truth about happiness is to think happiness should make me feel happy. Researchers say that novelty and challenge, what I would call growth, is a key element to happiness. And I have to confess, when I first heard this, I thought, well, you know, maybe that's true for other people. But that's not true for me, because I like familiarity and mastery. I like, you know, I, I eat the same food every day. I rarely leave my neighborhood. I like to read and write, and that is about all. But I've come to realize that even for someone like me, growth is a key element to happiness. The kind of growth that we feel when we try a new activity for the first time, or go to a new place, meet someone new, learn to do something new, fix something, help someone. But while we get a big boost in happiness from growth, growth also brings with it feelings of fear, anxiety, and frustration. 
to live lives that reflect our values, we often make choices that don't make us feel happy. And yet they do make us feel happy. So for, for instance, I am a very fearful driver. I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, so I know how to drive. But I moved to New York City, and basically for years, I quit driving. And I decided I wanted to grow and start driving again, so I started driving. Now, when I never drove, I never thought about driving, and it never bothered me. And now that I'm driving, I think about driving all the time. I have bad dreams about driving, and I think about it with active dread. So driving does not make me feel happy. And yet I am happier driving. Another example, true confession, I have given countless talks, but I have never used slides before. And I decided to conquer my anxiety, and I, here I am using slides, and it makes me very happy. <laughs> and the fifth and final half-truth about happiness is one that I myself invoked. I just said it a few minutes ago. Did you catch it? I said that one of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make other people happy. And that's true. It's absolutely true. And it's one of the nicest things about human nature. One of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make other people happy. One of the best ways to make other people happy is to be happy yourself. Happy people help make people happy. Now, many people are concerned about the aim of wishing to be happier because they, they worry that it's selfish. And this concern comes in two forms. One is to think, I have all the elements of a happy life. If I'm not happy or I want to be happier, I must be a spoiled brat. And the other is to think, in a world so full of suffering, it's not morally appropriate to seek to be happier. But in fact, studies show and common experience confirms that happy people are more interested in the problems of the people around them and more interested in the pain of the world. Happiness does not make people want to drink daiquiris on the beach. It makes them want to volunteer for organizations that distribute malaria nets. Happy people are more altruistic. They volunteer more, they give away more money, and they're more likely to help out if they see that someone needs a hand. They have stronger relationships with their family, their friends, their colleagues. When we're unhappy, we tend to become isolated, defensive, and preoccupied with our own problems. And when we're happy, we have the emotional wherewithal to turn outwards and to think about other people and the problems of the world. One of the best ways to make other people happy is to be happy yourself. And so to conclude, here's a bonus pair of half-truths. If it is selfish to want to be happier, we should be selfish if only for selfless reasons. And we should be selfless if only for selfish reasons. Thank you. <laughs>